Hello everyone, Felix here. My original Raiding Content Packs video got a lot of attention, or at least a lot of attention for this channel. I was originally going to make another video with a similar setup of me quickly going through several content packs, and I still might make that, but for now, I wanted to slow down and take a deep dive into a single content pack and see which style I like better. If I like this better, I will eventually make a deep dive for any content pack I want to review. If I like the first style better, I will go back to that. This style is going to go over every single location. Playgrounds, COG HQs, COG facilities, boss fights, you get the idea. And I'm going to give my commentary for each individual location. I also wanted to preface this by saying that I haven't actually made a content pack for myself, but I am an artist. I've done digital art for about 6 years and traditional art for about 8, and I've also done some music composition for a couple of years. So while I don't necessarily have the exact experience of making content packs, I do have some experience with making art, and I personally interpret content packs as art. Anyways, since I'm already so familiar with it and I have a lot to say about it already, I decided my sort of prototype or guinea pig for this potential series is going to be the Miss Content Pack. If you saw my original video, you already know I love this content pack while still having some criticisms, so you'll already know a bit about what to expect. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first place I'll be talking about is Toontown Central. Right off the bat, I noticed that the music was honestly really depressing. If that was the goal, then good job, because it makes me feel really sad and empty every time I listen to it. Inside the tune hall, the music near the silly meter gave mysterious but peaceful vibes, which I really enjoyed. It was sort of like giving a little beacon of hope, but the music still felt like there was a hint of failure and despair in it, so it matched the outside music really nicely. And then, the standard indoor music activated by walking near Flippy's desk, and it fell really out of place. Why does the outside music sound so somber, but the indoor music sounds so upbeat and adventurous? The aesthetics don't match, which I don't like. Okay, now for the actual textures. I thought the little plaza area with the HQ, library bank, and tune hall looked pretty nice. I thought the ground's texture was a bit so-called noisy, but it wasn't actually a bad thing in this case. I thought looking at the ground having a lot of detail and calling so much attention to itself really made the plain looking textures of the building somehow kind of pop out. It's something I'd never want to attempt in art, so whether or not that was intentional, I have to give some applause for. Inside the HQ, and every other HQ by extension, I loved the floor texture. The realistic wood really impressed me for some reason, and I still find myself admiring it when I'm in an HQ. I also really love what they did to the fences and the HQs. They look so cool. I will always want to look at those fences because they're just that cool. Outside, some of the replaced textures don't seem to be the highest quality. Trees with unnatural black edges along with bushes that have random extra pixels floating above them make me think it was taken from a background eraser of some kind. Regardless of whether or not that's actually true, it still looks pretty lazy to me. Do I blame them? No, because if I was retexturing an entire game for free, I'd probably want to cut a few corners too. I did find it odd how things like lamps look just fine though despite being objects of relatively the same decorative importance as trees. On the other hand, the bridge across the water looked so nice it seemed out of place. The blurry, low quality of the grass didn't make a great backdrop for the bridge, especially when it has a smoother texture while the grass is more rough, so it ended up sticking out like a sore thumb. The water texture is also just weird, which makes it even worse. I feel bad because the bridge itself is outstanding, but their surroundings are so lacking in aesthetically supporting it that the bridge ends up looking like the odd one out or something unaesthetic. None of them actually look inherently bad, they just don't mix well. Well, at least the sidewalks do blend well with the texture of the grass. I don't really like the sidewalks, but they blend nicely with the aesthetic, so I can't complain much. However, the bricks on the interior of the tunnels did not really match very well with the ground. I'm pretty sure those bricks were made mostly with other playgrounds in mind because those tunnels actually look pretty good in other playgrounds, but here it just felt a bit out of place for me. On the streets, I liked the main road a lot. I also thought the sidewalk texture was really nice, except for the random wood on the edges. The wood felt so out of place to me, and I feel like it would have been a lot better to add something stone, or even just to give the wood a more grayish purple hue to blend with the stony look better. I personally didn't like how it stuck out like a sore thumb so much. 
The music doesn't fit the aesthetic of the playground's music either. It sounds like it fits better with the general indoor music because it gives a sense of an upbeat adventure, and this one also gives a bit of a mysterious feel. The playground still sounds like despair to me, so this crazy contrast didn't sit well with me. It's very pleasant to listen to, but it just doesn't fit the aesthetic. I had no issues with anything else because I felt like the desaturated colors on the buildings and their textures mostly fit relatively well together while st still keeping a bit of the wacky Toontown vibe. There's definitely some exceptions to this, but I didn't think listing all of them was really warranted, especially after I've torn apart so many other things in just this one area already. Actually, just Toontown Central is over a page in my script and I'd really like to move on, so I'm gonna talk about Donald's Dock now. I'm just going to say right now that I hate the music here and I don't know why. There's nothing wrong with it and I think it fits the playground nicely, but for whatever reason, I just don't like it. I also found the visual glitch with the ropes to be mildly entertaining, but that's pretty irrelevant. The fact the music doesn't change when you're underwater was pretty sad to me because I always thought that little detail was so cute. Even sticking the song through a filter would have been pretty cool, but oh well. At least going underwater looks pretty cool, but it may just be because I like saturated blues a lot. I don't have much to say about the ship other than it really complements the Toon HQ, so I'm gonna have to give some applause for that. But that, um, rock texture? I actually have no idea what those swirls are supposed to be, but I think they're supposed to be rocks. It looks really cool, but since I can't tell what it's supposed to be, it puts me off a little bit. Also, why does the indoor music sound like something that would fit a lot better in Toontown Central? If the playground indoor music was swapped for these two places, I feel like it would fit a lot better. The playground music just gives mysterious vibes, so it would work well with a more adventurous song. Especially since the playground is themed around an ocean and ships. The indoor music does fit here and gives the feel of resting after a long journey, but it would be better in Toontown Central in my opinion. On the streets, I loved the music immediately. It fits so nicely with an adventurous feel, and I also love the wood textures on the main road, on the main road and the side of the road. The wood for the sidewalks was a bit too dark for my liking, and I commonly mistake it for stones, but it's not that big of a deal to me. I thought that the buildings were really nicely done, and I actually have zero complaints for it. However, I would like to call attention to the fishing pond. The interior texture of the pond's walls does not match very well with the texture of the ground. They don't match in color or texture whatsoever, and the stark contrast puts me off so much. I think they were trying to do that on purpose because it looks pretty intentional, but it was not executed very well in my opinion. I think they were trying to go for a sandy look, so maybe if they weren't limited by what Toontown has to offer, they could have made it look better. If I imagine some sand around the edges and making it sort of look like a gradient, it already looks way cooler in my head. I don't really have much else to say about Donald's Dock, so I'm gonna move on to Chippendales. If you saw my original video, you already know I absolutely adore the music here. It's so peaceful and makes me think of a fighter finally retiring after a very intense career, or even an old person reflecting on their youth. Since this is a playground that's mostly meant for relaxing and having fun, and yes, I know golf is not relaxing or fun, but that's not the point here, I thought the music fit really well. I also love the water texture because it just looks so cool. As somebody who needs to work on drawing water surfaces better, that looks like something I would be so proud to draw. The bridge also looked really pretty to me, and I felt like it fit the playground really well. The picnic tables, on the other hand, well, I have some very specific commentary about them. In terms of blending with just the grass, the striations on the wood are too pronounced. The soft feel of the grass and not having much contrast versus the wood having a lot of contrasting colors does not fit well. However, in relation to the water, it fits amazingly well and looks absolutely gorgeous. So, as long as you're looking at some water while you're looking at a picnic table, it actually looks really nice. Also, why is the bark purple on the trees by the playground entrances? If the playground felt more magical or just non-realistic to me, then I wouldn't think twice about it, but since this feels like a content pack that's supposed to look more realistic and grounded in reality, it's just weird. Am I just really bad at telling colors apart, or is that genuinely a purple hue? I'd also like to ask, what is going on with the water by the geyser? 
A different texture is fine, but why doesn't the geyser also change textures to match the light blue, less detailed aesthetic? It doesn't match, and I don't like it. However, the biggest complaint I have is that a lot of the bushes and trees are really low quality. Since everything else is given so much detail, and even some with realistic textures, this looks very out of place, and even looks kinda lazy. Okay. I'm also going to be adding the golfing lobby to this, since it's technically a part of Chippendales, but I'll talk about the actual mini golf part later. The biggest complaint I have is that some of the golf carts don't seem to have the same coloration. One of them always seems to be a slightly different shade than the other two, and I don't know if that's just an unfortunate optical illusion or an actual thing because I'm too lazy to go and check if the hues are the same with a color picking tool. I'm also personally not a fan of the music, but that might just be from my days of playing too much mini golf with this texture pack. I kind of vaguely remember liking the music at some point in time. Other than those two specific complaints, I genuinely have like nothing else to say about the mini golf lobby. Maybe that means it's boring, maybe that means it's really good and I have nothing specific to complain or tear apart. But either way, that's it. So I'm gonna move on and talk about Daisy Gardens. I'm just gonna immediately say I've never been a huge fan of the way the flower aesthetic was executed in Daisy Gardens, even in the base game. I love the aesthetic of flowers, but it always felt half-baked to me. This content pack definitely does a lot better to feel more immersive with the whole flower thing, but there's only so much it can do. I love how all the ground textures blended together so nicely, and I especially like the texture on the ground by the gag shop and trolley area. I also love the wall texture for the thing holding it up because it just looks like nature swallowing that wall, which helps me feel the flower aesthetic more thoroughly. The hedge maze being extremely saturated is actually contrast done right in my opinion. It makes the whole thing pop nicely and adds to the overall atmosphere to help it feel more lively and not just like the plants are dead or something. I also felt like the Toon HQ exterior was really creative and it remains one of my favorite things in the entire content pack. With all those praises being said, I have bad things to say about the music again. It feels like someone's thinking of old, sad memories from the past, and I don't think a playground based on plants should have depressing music. I guess it could work in an edgy, the only thing keeping me from feeling the full weight of my sadness is all the flowers way, but I'd rather not have to interpret it that way. Something a little more upbeat could have done a lot better to really make the playground come to life with the proper tone, because audio means everything. It's more important than your visuals, as this playground shows with amazing visuals but poor fitting audio. However, I will give props for the indoor music at least fitting the theme of the outdoor music. Mostly. It feels a little too hopeful. As for the streets, it has the same problem as the playground. Visually, it's outstanding. I love the streets and the sidewalk blends in perfectly well. The brightly colored buildings provide a really amazingly done bit of contrast and I love it. But the music? It sets the entire mood off. The playground feels really sad while the streets sound hopeful and even happy. The tones don't match and it makes me dislike basically all of Daisy Gardens for that reason alone. And with that, I'm gonna move on to Minnie's Melody Land. If you saw my original video, you know I love this place. Well, it's actually a bit more complicated than that because there's a lot of things I don't like about minis. But first, I'm gonna talk about the stuff I like. First and foremost, the ground texture is so cool. I love the little squares if you couldn't tell by now. It's just so unique no matter how many times I see it in this pack, except for one exception I'll talk about later. I also love how the piano texture in the back of the playground got an upgrade and looks so detailed. The general desaturated feel of the entire playground with pops of color is something the entire content pack sees, but here I always felt like it worked best. And the things I don't like? I don't like how the piano by the fishing pond was not given an upgrade. I don't like the buildings, specifically the yellows because they don't match the vague purple hue everything else has. But most importantly of all, I don't like the outdoor music. How come? It does not match the feel of the indoor music, which is my favorite thing in the entire content pack. So yes, I'm going to be biased and suggest the outdoor music change to fit the vibe of the indoor music, even though I usually suggest the indoor match the outdoor music. Both the indoor and outdoor music can fit the aesthetic of the playground, but again, I'm just biased. For the streets, I love a lot of things about them. The street and sidewalk are great, but the ugly wood strikes again. 
Seriously, I'd like to know why that wood is everywhere. It just doesn't fit in like 90% of the places it's put in. Please, at least just recolor it to fit the aesthetic or something. I still don't like the yellows on the buildings because they don't go well with all the pinks and purples everywhere, but I have less of a problem with it because of the buildings that look like a mix between pink and orange. It at least gives the yellows a more reason to exist there. I do have a pretty big problem with the fishing pond though. Why is the ground the most boring gray ever? I would say maybe it's not textured, but the original color is an extremely obnoxious yellow, so that clearly means something can be edited. If non-textured things can change color, why don't they just change the color of the purple outlines and HQs and the blue railing and minis? I genuinely can't tell if this is somehow a special non-textured tile that can mysteriously change color, or it was just laziness. Since I can't tell, I'm going to assume it was laziness and take away several points here. Also, the random tile between the road and the fishing pond doesn't make it any better. Also, I actually don't really have anything good or bad to say about the music for once. It just kind of exists. It's definitely nothing remarkable, but it sort of works. But since it's also nothing noteworthy, that makes all of Minnie's Melody Land streets feel like it's nothing noteworthy. And so the coloration of entire locations just from audio continues. And with that, let's look at the Berg. I hate this place with a burning passion. The aesthetic is extremely well done from the music to the visuals and it's really impressive, but I hate the aesthetic so much. I feel kind of bad since again, it's executed so well, but I genuinely can't stand it anyways. So I'm instead going to leave a bullet point list of all the things that went well here to make the aesthetic work, and that is the water texture, the grass texture, the leaf particles instead of keeping them as snowflakes, the trees, the music, the color scheme, the HQ texture, and the lamps. There is one major flaw in the entire aesthetic though, and that's the ice cubes on the streets. I guess you could argue that it's glass, but then you have to ask yourself why there's random cubes of glass, sometimes with things inside them, on the streets. I don't know why these weren't changed to something else, but it puts a huge dent in the almost perfect aesthetic. Okay, and now onto another playground I hate. Donald's Dreamland. This playground suffers the same exact fate as Daisy Gardens. Visually, it's actually really nice and I love it. The light browns blended really nicely with the desaturated colors for a healthy contrast, but the music is... I'm just not a fan of it. I'm probably gonna get some hate for talking down on this particular music given where it's from, but I still felt like it was just too out of place for my liking. Since I don't like this playground and I don't want to see too much hate come my way, I'm just gonna leave it at that and move on to the COG HQs. I can immediately tell you that my favorite thing about this place is the music. The ethereal but sad feeling fits the HQ really nicely in my opinion since it gives the feeling of something once great falling apart, which fits Toontown lore pretty well. I also really loved how detailed the gravel texture was and how metal parts actually looked like metal. The bricks were also a nice touch in my opinion, and overall the entire aesthetic is captured really nicely. Everything being grayscale is obviously a cog thing, but I felt like the content pack really leaned into the whole depressing, boring grayscale thing. The factory lobby looks really amazing. From the metal to the stone, everything is just visually amazing here. Well, almost. The gear inside the little factory tunnel gives me vibes of a Minecraft squid, and the blurriness on the large white pipes is not the most flattering look. But other than those two specific things, I thought that everything looked amazing here. Everything else looked really high quality and definitely gave me vibes of a cold, unwelcoming factory. And now, let's move on to Cashbot HQ. I can practically feel how cold and desolate this place is. From the quiet, ethereal, and yet mysterious music to the blue hues everywhere, it all seems to scream cold and I love it. I know I praise Cellbot HQ for really leaning into the whole grayscale thing and that being the reason I liked it so much, but I also love the monocolor approach with the cash bots. It still has a very boring cog-like feel to it, but it still adds some variety. I know my sister said that the cash bots should have been green for money, but I honestly have to disagree. 
If everything had a green hue instead of blue, then the entire HQ wouldn't give me the same cold and desolate feeling, and I might not have been as impressed or immersed. Also, I love the grainy look on most of the textures here. Everything looking roughly done really helped me feel like it's unwelcoming, which aids to the desolate feeling. If you couldn't tell, Cash Ride HQ that. was an exceptionally immersive experience for me that I enjoyed a lot. Visually and musically, it was done so well that I was able to really let my imagination run wild here. It's my favorite place in the base game, and this content pack did it a lot of justice even with an entirely new vibe. And now, I'll talk about Lawbot HQ. I adore Lawbot HQ probably about as much as I love Cashbot HQ. Once again, it's so visually and musically well done that it takes me through a journey. But this time, it makes me imagine something from the 20s when jazz was starting to take off. The whole place feels like something from an older generation, and it's outstanding. While none of the textures really struck my interest because I was more so focused on them being completely monochrome rather than the finer details, I didn't think any of them were really out of place. The entire place just fits together so nicely that I forgot I was supposed to be picking apart the smaller pieces because all I could see was the whole picture. Also, before I move on to Bossbot HQ, I'd like to say the one individual thing that did stick out to me was the sky because it was the only thing with color, and I thought it was gorgeous. Okay, now on to Bossbot HQ. This time, it's actually the visuals that fail the music. The music is epic. It really immerses me into the feeling of walking straight into the wolf's den, the most dangerous cogs of all until the green and green lands on my screen. It's about the same level of disappointment as finding out boss bots are actually the least dangerous cog in the entire game. Everything feels really intimidating and scary, but it ends up basically being a big hoax. While I'm glad I'm not walking on a floor that looks like garbage, I prefer the dead look from the base game because it made me feel like the boss bots and the CEO were so despicable that even nature didn't stand a chance to get in their way. Because the music is so intimidating, I still can't shake off the whole feeling of walking to the final boss though. The music is just so good that it almost makes Boss Bot HQ perfect anyways, despite all the visual things I dislike. Also, ignoring the blurry trees, I'd like to ask, why are the hedge doorway-like things striated? I'm assuming the hedge texture just gets stacked a bunch of times and the gradient makes it end up looking striated, but it still looks incredibly weird to me. Also. I don't like that the oil was replaced with water because it's incredibly less intimidating. I'd also like to bring attention to how obnoxious the golf carts are to the entire aesthetic of the place. The purple hue fits the boss bots, but it doesn't match the aesthetic of boss bot HQ. Actually, how come everything isn't purple like the boss bots? Anyways, let's move on to the estate now. Okay, can I just leave a bullet point list of things I like and dislike here? I can? Okay, good. Here's the things I like. The top part of the cherry on top house exterior, the fence, except for the fact you can see where the texture loops, most floors, the rugs, wallpapers, chairs and couches, the default bed, default house texture, the bridges, mailbox textures, sand texture, water texture, fishbowl having a cog in it, leaf bed, display shelf having what's presumably a potion on it, and the lit fireplace. And here's the things I don't like. The doors and windows to the cherry on top house exterior. They look like visual bugs or random images. The phone, some paintings, the piggy bank because the jelly beans look more like bouncy balls or a gumball machine. The pot for the mushroom plant because it looks like a random swirl of colors. The moon, bubble tea being the treats, and the small stove texture because it has a really weird pattern. And after those long lists and no further commentary other than I like the fact there's music in the estate, I'm going to talk about Chippendale's mini golf and then the cog facilities. The Undertale music immediately wins brownie points with me, just saying. I think it's a bitter irony to be so peaceful when I hate golf with a passion, but that's me being biased. I really like how the grass and walls are given a very similar, if not the same texture. There's not much else to say because there isn't really much else in mini golf, so I'm gonna move on after that extremely brief commentary. Music is almost perfect, but not quite, which is unfortunate too. It gets the feeling of a really desolate place that fell from something once great, but instead of feeling mysterious, it just feels sad. 
However, it's close enough to passing that I'll probably have to say it's good enough anyways. I don't really have any specific commentary on any textures since I thought everything just looked really cool and fit the aesthetic really well. I literally have only one complaint because it just looks that good to me. My one complaint? I'd like to know what those black squares hanging in the warehouse are supposed to represent. And with that, I'll move on to mints. I'm just as impressed with mints as I am with Cashbot HQ. The music still fits the cold, desolate feeling and the blue hues are still there. The entire time I was doing the mint, I was completely immersed in the experience. My only complaint is that once the standard battle music starts playing, it's much louder and definitely pretty jarring to suddenly start hearing. However, since it's just the standard battle music that plays everywhere, it gets a pass. It'd be impossible to have a bunch of different aesthetics and expect the standard battle music to fit all of them at once. Okay, and now for DA offices. Once again, I'm thoroughly impressed with the immersion. The old timey music combined with the extremely dark, almost grayscale environment was amazing. I also love how as an added bonus, it made spotlights in the LED displays of puzzles appear brighter and thus more threatening and scary. I'm aware it's incredibly difficult to see where you're going on some monitors, such as my laptop, but I was recording this on my sister's desktop so it was not a problem for me when I was recording. That's all I have to say about DA offices, so now it's time for the called golf courses. I absolutely hate the music for the holes that are not the final floor. It doesn't give an intimidating feeling at all. It just feels like somebody is thinking back on old memories they were fond of and miss. Since there's no intimidating music to make the visuals seem better than they actually are, it also makes the awful greenery stick out even more to me and make me not like it even more. Oh, and to make things even worse, on some monitors, it's basically impossible to see where you're going in the mazes or if there's even vines. The music for the final floor starts off intimidating with the clock chimes and the buildup, but it quickly ends up falling short after not building up to anything actually scary or intimidating. I'm pretty disappointed in how the COG golf courses feel. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about the boss fights and then some miscellaneous stuff. Since there isn't much to talk about for each fight, I'll just do it in one big category. First up, the VP. I love the texture on the VP. It actually makes him look scary instead of just looking like the COG's version of being silly. I also love the textures in the environment, especially the cobblestone. I don't know, I just felt like it really suited the cogs. For the CFO, I really love the detail of him missing an eye. It makes him look like he's been through a few train wrecks, and very scary. I'm also once again a fan of the blue hues on basically everything. I have mixed feelings about the mint music being reused for the CFO, and the Matsuhari sequence. Is that how you pronounce their name? I don't know. But overall, I think... I like it, since it gives it a calm before the storm feeling. While I much prefer Toontown CFO music because Vault Ventures is an absolute bop, the music is still pretty cool during the craning round. And next up, the CJ. Once again, I love the black and white feeling to everything. I also love how textured the CJ's robe is. However, I wasn't a fan of the same boss music being used during the cannon round. At least it was something different for the evidence round, and I like how it felt intense, but it wasn't in your face. It gave me vibes of two classy people having a fight, but still being determined to stay elegant for the whole thing to keep up their image. And last but not least, the CEO. First thing I'd like to say is thank goodness those ugly waiter suits were changed. They look way more classy now, which I think makes a lot more sense than those disgusting white ones. The CEO also looks really awesome and intimidating. But the thing I like the most, it's actually the music during the feeding round. It's so intense and really gives a sense of urgency that I feel like the feeding round really needs. My favorite song that plays starts with about 130 seconds left on the clock, but I feel like it would have been way cooler if it was the last song to play as the time runs out since it gives the feeling that something absolutely awful is just moments from happening and it sends me into a flying panic every single time. The music during the actual CE round, though, is of variable relevance. And now, time for some miscellaneous stuff. If you're wondering why I'm not including field offices, it's because Myst has zero support for field offices since the content pack was made before field offices were a thing, and there has not been an update to texture them. Time for COG buildings. I honestly don't have much to say here other than I really love the music on every floor except for the final floor. 
I don't like how the gear on the door is not perfectly round, and I otherwise have no problem with any of the textures. Moving on. I hate the music, and I think a lot of the textures are extremely out of place here. Yes, that's all I'd like to say about Goofy Speedway because I just hate it that much. It feels like a dump of random textures and the races still have their original music. Talk about having no immersion whatsoever. Yeah, moving on. I don't have very much to say about the sticker book other than it fits the desaturated aesthetic of the entire content pack. Yep. That's it. Although there are definitely some places I'd never dream of using Mist, namely Boss Fight HQ and Goofy Speedway, I still really love this content pack. In my original video I gave the pack an 8 out of 10, but in this video I'll take a little bit longer to give it a score. I'm going to grade it on 4 categories, each with 10 points, and total up all those scores to get the final score. The 4 categories are playability, aesthetic quality, aesthetic appeal, and immersion. Playability refers to how accessible the game is, both visually and auditorily. This means nothing is too dark to see, too bright for the eyes, too blurry, too loud, too quiet, etc. Aesthetic quality refers to how well the aesthetics are actually done, while aesthetic appeal is what I think of them regardless of their actual quality. And finally, immersion is how I feel the vibe of the pack. To be more accurate in my scoring, I scored each location on these categories and then averaged them out to get the content pack's overall score in each category. I'll post screenshots of the full table, but I won't actually discuss each location's scoring for the sake of time. So, on average, this content pack has a score of 31.61 out of 40. If you turn that into a percentage, that would be 79%. I don't really have anything else to add to my scoring because I think that's a pretty fair way to score the content pack, and I'm actually really surprised it was basically what I rated it in my original video. Let me know what you think of this content pack, and if I should do more videos like this in the future, or if I should go back to the style of my first video that looked at several content packs in a shorter period of time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.